<laughs> Welcome, I'm Julia. And I am Marta. And this is Late Mode, a podcast in search of the zeitgeist. Through a series of conversations, we explore the fragmented and hyperconnected modes of our current times. First of all, a huge thank you to anyone who took the time to listen in. To start off, I guess we should introduce ourselves. My name is Julia. I'm currently in my living room in Porto, but who knows from where else I'll be recording on the line. And I will tell you a little bit about myself. I have a background in the arts and the social sciences. For most of my life, I've been playing around with photographs as mediums of communication and exploration, which is what I continue to do nowadays, one way or another. I guess listeners will find out through the episodes that I don't find the arts to be separate from social research. I'm in fact very interested in the intersection of those two. And in a way, this is how the idea of late mode as a platform and as a concept was born in the first place. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Marta, do you want to introduce yourself? I surely do. Hello there, everyone. I am so glad you are here. Uh, thank you for making time to be here. Not sure where you are right now, whether you're sitting down, you're biking, your daily route. I don't know if your day is ending, starting, hitting midpoint, but I hope that you will find something here that makes listening worth it. My name is Marta. And I have to confess, this is the first time I make a podcast or record anything that I am going to try to force others to listen to. So please bear with me. What else? I am an Amsterdam-based storyteller, originally Italian, and currently attending a research master's in art and performance research studies at the University of Amsterdam. I am a reader, above all else, and a writer, as well as a perennial student. That is how I met Julia. We followed a course about curatorship together, we managed to like each other across a Zoom screen, and decided that we wanted to work together. She ended up publishing a paper I wrote about a project called In Computo Siciliano by Alterazione Video Collective. And from that moment on, I guess we started a long-term kind of collaboration. I love collaborations. I think working together with people in small duos or in big groups is one of the best ways to grow, grow beyond the limits that we give ourselves, what we thought that we could be or that we were capable of doing. So I could not be happier to be here with you, Julia. Same for me, really. I'm very grateful to share this talk with you and with whoever is listening right now. And I was thinking it is actually nice to talk a little bit about the journey leading up to Late Mode, Late Mode as a platform and as a concept in general. As during my studies in sociology, I came across this concept of late modernity, an academic term used by sociologists like Bauman or Giddens, to theorize and analyze our current times. Now, without getting into academic talks, I remember that one point really struck me when reading those texts. As in this conceptualization, the main driver of our time would be uncertainty. This uncertainty will be driving us individuals to fill ourselves with overconsumption, to work to fulfill our immediate desires, And this uncertainty would leave us feeling ultimately disembedded and disconnected from traditions and from one another. And I thought, wow, it sounds pretty bad. And let's presuppose that this is true on a large scale. But how is each one of us reacting to this? As I still saw around me so many people busy with making sense of these scales, trying to be better humans, even when we're told they were so bad at being humans. So I thought, let's talk about these stories. Let's investigate these modes of existence. Let's give them more spaces to be heard. And I guess this brings us to the name of the podcast. What do you think, Marta? Should we talk about what we mean by late mode? Yes, Julia, 
I think we shall, and I believe I am the person to do it. As I think I have been late to almost every single event in my life past my birth, and that is because my mother scheduled a sea cut and was probably the last time I was on time. Lateness, um, or rather that panicked feeling of anxiety that you get when you appointment and you risk arriving late, but you might also make it on time. You don't really know yet. So you keep rushing through the streets with this half hope, half sense of dread. And every chronically late person here knows this is a very different feeling from the resigned half an hour late. What do I have to lose state of mind? This other much less cool state of lateness seemed to us like a sort of metaphor for our daily lives. We realize the mode that we find ourselves living in more often than not is a late mode, a bit like flight mode. And somebody decides to switch this mode for you and says you can revert back anytime you want just before smashing a hammer on the screen of your phone. The reason we decided to call this podcast Late Mode then is that we identify in this mode, this dreadful, anxious, rushing without any certainty of making it on time, uh, to be a modality for approaching life in the 21st century. Even when we do our best to resist it, through our infinitely diverse daily practices, the anxiety somehow seeps in. Are we the only ones that feel this way? And if not, how are people dealing with this anxiety? What are they creating out, against, because of it? And could this state be considered part of the zeitgeist of Western capitalist societies? In a world characterized by a lack of linear temporalities, where everything is global and at the same time incredibly fragmented, can we speak of multiple zeitgeists? Or should we even use the concept of zeitgeist at all? All this, and much more, we hope to discuss with a diverse pool of guests sourced from all paths of life and from all over the world. Our questions will be following as fragmented a path as possible while swirling around the pond of right now. What is now to others? What do they think is relevant, important, politically urgent? What are their life missions, hobbies, artistic practices? And how do they philosophize about themselves in this particular historical moment? Yes, I think you just described the core of late mode. And I think we should say that although late mode as a working title for a project was inspired in an academic concept, as I mentioned before, changing the name was almost done on purpose to try and step back from rigid academic frameworks or all-encompassing definitions. I guess it will become clear that I'm personally interested in this idea, let's call it of original knowledge, this idea that we could carry the weight of not knowing, that we could feel as though we're not able to speak of concepts or ideas because we don't know who to quote, and that in turn, this weight could limit the possibilities of having conversations with one another. If I may, Julia, I'd like to add something to that, because I recently visited uh, the Black Archives here in Amsterdam, and I had a wonderful uh, pair of hosts, Richard and Camille. Uh, and something Camille said during that session really stuck with me ever since. Uh, she said, an expert is somebody who speaks from a position of experience. And this I find to be super important, especially in regard to what you just said, not this idea of original knowledge that invalidates our own opinions constantly. And that is a really good point. And we should say that this is what we will try to avoid in our late mode conversations. Of course, we will try and do our best to not be limited by this weight of not knowing. I mean, I personally believe that we can call ourselves expert of our own time simply for the fact that we exist right now. But I'd like to tell our listeners what we as hosts 
are interested in, as I'm sure that some of these topics will naturally emerge in the conversations that we're going to have with our guests. And I would like to give you listeners an idea of what you can expect from the episodes to come. So I'll give you the floor, Marta. Well, I'd like to say all of them. I'm not a pick and choose kind of person. I'm a hoarder. I hoard books and topics and hobbies and interests. And uh, I hope that we get to do just that in this podcast. Because <laughs> as we already said, each guest, besides the first ones, um, is going to choose the topic of the session that will follow. We will briefly give them an introduction to the guests coming after them and they will have to say, I think that with this person's background, it would be interesting to hear what they have to say about this. And then Julia and I will have to take up the challenge of making a conversation spin around the topic that was suggested. I am so looking forward to this. But of course, I do have my own favorites and things that have been tickling me recently, things that I have been working with um, in my practice and in my life are magic. Um, I'm very interested in magic and in imagination. I'm interested in pedagogy. I'm interested in strategies of care caring for each other. What does it mean for me to care for somebody um, as a babysitter, as I do as a job, or for me to care for my roommates in my shared housing in Amsterdam? What does it mean to care for somebody as a podcast host? What does it mean to care for a listener? And what does it mean to care for me? And how do I learn to do that better? I am also interested in shared knowledges. I coordinate the Artistic Research Knitting Club here in Amsterdam with the partner Lisa Prince. Hi, Lisa. Um, I'm interested in slow time. What does it mean to make time for ourselves to slow down? What does it mean to make space to have the conversations that we've been wanting to have for a long time and couldn't find a place for? I am interested also in deep time and in anything that is capable of changing perspectives. And what about you, Julia? What are you interested in? First of all, I can't wait to see how you will explore the topic of magic. It sounds really fascinating. Um, well, I have been recently learning more about the natural environment which is something new for me. I have discovered how we can be inspired by plants and botanicals. Um, I love conversations for a start, specifically the potential of engaging in conversations with one another, which I see as a method of exploration and as a tool to feel present. And I guess this podcast is an expression of that. In the past years, I've also become quite engaged in the study of religious practices and beliefs. And listeners can definitely expect to hear more on those topics here. And I'm also really interested in creativity, specifically in observing the process of creativity, as in why do we create what motivates us? I mentioned before my background in photography, which for me is mostly a practice of observation. And from this practice, I learned that it is not so much about the outcome of a creative impulse, but it is rather about its processes, what we learn along the way as we give space to the creative act. And I guess I'm just very curious to know what kind of impulses will be discussed here. To Julia, and I'm really looking forward to finding out and actually, as you said, getting into it, talking to these speakers, 
We're going to be selecting the speakers erratically. And honestly, I have no idea who Julia is going to choose. She has no idea who I am going to choose. So I am particularly excited about the fact that I will get to listen to Julia's podcast while she speaks with somebody else in Porto, just as if I were any other listener. And speaking of listeners, let's mention that we would love later down the track to receive suggestions on themes or possible guests or any comments from anyone who's tuned in. Absolutely. Feel free at any point through latemode.eu to contact us and give us reviews of the podcast Tell us what you'd like us to speak about. Um, tell us that we've been misbehaving and have been very naughty if we have. This is a podcast that really tries to give credit when credit is due. So I'm also going to sleep a footnote. This footnote is a big thank you to Federico Campagna, whose work has been extremely inspiring to both of us in terms of what relates to the creative act, uh, the acts of worlding uh, and uh, the ruins that we leave behind for future generations. So in a way, this idea that I really appreciate, Julia, which you brought up of the conversation as a method, uh, I think that that is exactly what we're going to be trying to do, both to live the process of the conversation as an act of worlding So two imaginations that meet together and give rise to a little imaginal world of their own. And at the same time, this idea that each conversation leaves a ruin behind, a theme, uh, a, a set of ideas, and that this gets to be inhabited at the next round by somebody who is completely unfamiliar with it. Well said, Marta. Well, we covered a lot of ground. And um, yes, dear listeners, this is what we're going to try and do. Hopefully we'll do a good job. Otherwise, I'm sure you will let us know. For now, we should say goodbye. And we will see you again in two weeks with our first guest. Thank you so much for staying with us until the end. If you want to dive deeper into the show, don't forget to check the podcast description for extra resources, contact information, and a sign-up form for our newsletter. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and until next time, take care.